Ugh. Ugh, well, that was, uh, that was a crazy New Year's. What's up? Hey, everyone, and welcome to Comic News. And, yeah, there's a few things to talk about. Starting with Morbius. The trailer for Morbius has come out this week, and it looks okay. Uh, you know, a lot of people are loving it particularly with the ending scene. But for me, I don't know. Uh, when I first heard about Morbius, I was hoping that it would go for maybe something like the Jeff Goldblum Fly movie, where it focuses on Michael slowly going through this metamorphosis and becoming the living vampire. But it looks like they're going to be doing the standard anti-hero story where Morbius is going to be trying to run around, fix himself, but at the same time, we have like these evil corporate guys, and we have this. We have Matt Smith's character, who yeah, they confirmed he's playing Hunger, who is also a living vampire, and well, you can guess where that's going. When it comes to the uh, two little Easter eggs regarding the MCU, that being the Spider-Man uh, uh, graffiti and Vulture showing up. Okay. Um, when it comes to the graffiti, okay, that's awesome. You know, that if it is supposed to be, you know, because of the MCU, that's great. Though it is weird that they went for the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man costume. Because, yeah, you can clearly tell that is him and not uh, Tom Holland. But still, interesting. Unless they say Tobey Maguire killed someone in his trilogy, outside his trilogy, but whatever. As for Vulture... I really do hope this is Adrian Toomes, okay? I really do hope, but a part of me is worried that they just got Michael Keaton in for the small cameo, and he's not actually Adrian Toomes. It's just to tease people, and then by the end of the movie, we're all going to be all pissed off because we just got ripped. But, again, maybe it is Adrian, and I really want this to be Adrian, but I could be fooled. Uh, besides that, Leto... He looks the part, uh, His even though we don't see a good look of his vampire form, it looks pretty comic accurate, so yeah, I, I might check it out. <laughs> also, um, yeah, Joker has gotten multiple Oscar nominations, and because of that, it's getting a limited re-release. Yeah, that's right, if you missed watching in theaters, you got another chance. So yeah, that's really cool. I really enjoyed the Joker film, and I was happy to hear that Joaquin Phoenix won a Golden Globe for Best Actor. I think it's really... What the heck are you doing here? <sighs> My dog. Just... Ah! Hey, buddy. Yeah. My spirit man, if he doesn't get that uh, freaking let's play out, he's gonna uh, you're going to bite him in the leg again. Bizarro critic! All right, but whatever. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Joker movie, coming back, and yeah, I'm excited. Next up, we have Damian Wayne, apparently doing something horrible in the future. <sighs> Alright, so, to make it very clear here, I'm not really a fan of what Bendis or... Honestly, what half of DC has been doing lately with its younger heroes. Uh, it just feels really weird, inconsistent, and they're kind of pushing their characters back, you know, from where they were before. Like, Damian Wayne went through this massive journey and became a better person, and then Glass showed up and did his run on Teen Titans and for some reason made him an asshole again. And also, for some reason, not a vegan, even though that was kind of a, you know, a big part of his character. Uh, and uh, then for Jonathan Kent, we decide to uh, say, screw you to all you Super Sons fans and make him a teenager. And essentially have him be a completely different character than the character that we all, you know, grew to love. So, yeah, just... Getting that out right now. But yeah, apparently Damian Wayne in the uh, latest run of Legion of Superheroes did do something horrible that compares him to baby Hitler when uh, his younger self showed up uh, with Jonathan Kent. So yeah, I'm guessing that, you know, the next big story arc for them will involve Damian Wayne. 
And I really hope frickin' Bendis will not screw this up, but lately he's just shown that he does not really care much for these characters, and it just ignores all previous works. So, yeah, you can tell my expectations are very, very low. Next up, we have the director of the previous Ghostbusters reboot, Paul Feig, saying that he wants to do a crossover with Ghostbusters Answer the Call. Yeah, to anyone who's been curious of how he felt about this, uh, yeah, he actually really is supportive of this. He does wish that he was able to do his Ghostbusters International uh, movie as he was planning for, but, you know, for now, he's just happy to pitch this idea for possibly doing a crossover. And it wouldn't be, you know, too out there for Ghostbusters. They've done it before with the extreme Ghostbusters meeting the real Ghostbusters on the TV shows and the comics. We had the IDW characters meet with the real Ghostbusters, the extreme Ghostbusters, and I think they also did some other Ghostbusters. But yeah, like, you know, it'd be interesting to do. And again, I like that this, uh, that the director is not being hateful for it. He's not pulling a Jared Leto and trying to boycott the film. So yeah, you know, I'd be up for a crossover. And finally, the ending to CW's adaptation of Crisis on Infinite Earths. Now, before we begin, I'm going to make this very clear here. This contains spoilers. If you have not seen the ending to Crisis on Infinite Earths, stop here. I'm going to give you a second. Okay, if you're still watching, you either saw the ending or you do not care. So, let's begin. So, just like in the uh, comic that this is based on, or at least loosely based on, the worlds have been merged. And it's really cool. Granted, there are some things that, uh, that kind of bug me, particularly with Weather Witch, since last time we saw that character, she was kind of going through a redemption arc, but... Whatever, I guess we're going to have to start from scratch or something. And, uh, yeah. It's really cool that we do this. Gives us more opportunity to bring in, you know, characters for crossovers without having to explain how they came to this Earth and the others. And, hell, apparently this Earth has also brought in new characters. Besides bringing, uh, bringing Diggle's daughter back, this also gave Superman a second son. Now, I'm kind of curious of what that could mean uh, and uh, who this kid can be. Some fans have actually theorized that this could actually be Christopher Kent, which, if it's Christopher Kent, that's really cool. If you don't know who that is, Christopher Kent is actually uh, the son of Zod, who Lois Lane and Clark adopt in the storyline uh, Superman Last Son, which is an amazing story. Uh, it's actually uh, written by both Jeff Johns and Richard Donner, and... Yeah, that'd be kind of cool if we got if that was actually Christopher, you know. And hell could be on hold for a bit since we're probably not going to get the Super Sons for a while. Though, you know, it will be sooner, uh, though, probably sooner now since, again, the Earths are now combined, which means Supergirl and uh, Batwoman are now same continuity. And as for the crossover itself, you know, as a whole, after watching uh, the entirety of it, I still really like it. It does still have some problems, uh, particularly in part three. I feel like things start getting really rushed, and it and it starts off pretty harmless. Like the whole thing with Black Lightning, though it just though he does just kind of pop up. It's a little weird, but not uh, not so bad. But then we get the stuff that are that's really important. That being the Spectre, uh, who in this universe is going to be Oliver Queen. And yeah, he just kind of shows up. And look, I like the Spectre, and I'm happy that he finally made a TV debut. But yeah, he just kind of shows up, tells them, hey, I need Oliver Queen to be the vessel, and Oliver takes it. We also don't get to spend that much time with the Antimoder in here. He just feels like a dragon, uh, you know, that being the term, that he's just a massive obstacle for them to overcome. And it's fine, but when you know how the character's like in the comics, you really want to see more of him. And as for the cameos, still really great cameos. There are some that I do feel like were a little unnecessary. Like there was a Jonah Hex cameo that I don't know why we brought him in here. Uh, 
especially since he's not even in makeup in this one. And uh, we also got, like, a Birds of Prey one, which I'm like, wow, they gave Birds of Prey a sound editing. Yeah, they're most likely still around because the Earths are restored, but still. Um, and then we have the really surprising cameo, that being Ezra Miller. Yeah, the movie Flash actually shows up in here, and apparently this is where he gets his idea for his name, The Flash, in here. Yeah, I really think about that. No one actually called him Flash in, uh, in the other movies. So, yeah, apparently he got his name from the TV Flash. And uh, I think it also could link to uh, his movie because he does start talking about, you know, how he wasn't planning on doing this and how Barry finds it odd that he's even able to show up here since when he shows up, the multiverse was supposedly destroyed. So, curious what that could mean. And speaking of other Flashes... We also get the conclusion on the 90s Flash, who gets a really sad, but at the same time heroic end, where he is the one who sacrificed himself to save the multiverse. Um, it's a good ending for his character, and we even get a flashback to the very last scene of his show. So, yeah. Uh, when it comes to this crisis, it's not perfect, but I had fun watching it. And uh, we're looking forward to see where this leads. Especially since apparently we're getting the Wonder Twins. Because Bleak shows up in the uh, Hall of Justice. Which, yeah, the Hall of Justice is an official thing. And the League is an official thing. So, uh, yeah. Alright, so. The holidays have come and gone. Which really does suck. But, because of the holidays, uh, I got some comics. So, I'm going to show you what I got, and whether or not I'm going to review them. Because, uh, or at least review them, you know, sooner than later. Because uh, there's a few that I feel like I might hold for a while. So, let's begin. Starting with the Magic Order. Now, I read a little bit of the Magic Order uh, during, the, uh, during its time uh, when it was just going in issues. And uh, it was pretty good. Uh, but I wasn't able to finish it. I was able to get the trade, though, uh, for Christmas. And it does read better as a trade. And whether or not I'll review it, yeah, I'll probably review it. But uh, not for a while, since it is getting a adaptation. And I'm considering maybe doing that as a comparison video. So, there's that. Next up, we got... Transformers Unicron. Yeah, uh, this is the big conclusion to the IDW run of Transformers where they face against, you know, the Chaos Bringer himself. And, you know, I'll just say right now, it is a really great story, but unless you know your Transformers uh, IDW stories, you're going to be a little confused. It's not a great book to read if you're just getting into it. Uh, and whether or not I'll review it, yeah, I'm definitely going to review it. Though, I might review a few other Transformers stories from IDW uh, before that because, yeah, again, there's a lot that happens in this story and there's a lot of characters that just kind of show up and unless you know their stories, you're going to be kind of wondering why they're there. So, yeah, there's that. Next, we got the Batman comics from Brian Azzarello. Uh, You know, this is a really, uh, just kind of like, yeah, like, this is just a really interesting, uh, series of stories. It contains, you know, as you can see here, it contains, you know, uh, Broken City, uh, Night of Vengeance, the Flashpoint storyline, uh, back before the Flashpoint Batman went completely crazy, uh, a few mini stories, and also the Gotham Knights stories that he wrote. And they're all pretty fun. I'll review them, definitely. Uh, Brian Azzarello is kind of a, you know, a really interesting writer. He's starting to slowly, slowly become, uh, you know, the next generation's Frank Miller. Uh, if you don't believe me, go check out uh, Batman Damned. Or don't. It's not a good book. I do not recommend reading that book. It's not interesting. The artwork's cool, but that's it. Um, but yeah, not great. And next, we got... Fight Club 2, and uh, I'm probably not going to review Fight Club 2 at least yet, uh, mostly because there's a third book coming out, and uh, or a third book you know being written right now, and I'm probably gonna go on hold and just review, you know, the Fight Club movie, uh, uh, possibly the novel if I can get my hands on the novel, then this, 
and then Fight Club 3. Just do a whole Fight Club uh, marathon, I guess. So, yeah. But these are the books I picked up. Uh, they were tons of fun, and I really loved uh, that, you know, I got these as gifts. You know, it was really much appreciated. So, uh, yeah. And that's the news. This is probably the longest one I've done, but whatever. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you whenever. Thank you.